Alright, it's tough. Hey. Alright, alright, you get the point. Where the hell have I been? I've been right here working on this van, the Vagabond van, van number two in the Humble Road story. Uh, I made a promise to the Vagabonds. I told them that Alex and I would try to get this van done as quickly as we could. We stepped up the pace. It left us no time for video. In the beginning, I was able to do a few videos. They were short, they were brief, they didn't make me happy. You know, I don't like doing that. For me, I gotta go big or I go home. So for me to shoot video and put the production up that I want, that I'm happy with, the same as building a van, I have to put in the time, I have to put in the thought, I have to put in the effort. I was not gonna do half-ass quick blurbs of video. And that would have taken time away from the build anyway. So I made a promise and we kept the promise. We worked on this van hard. We hit it hard. And to be honest, if you want to get technical, if we take COVID out of the picture, this van was very close to finished in seven months. Two guys, less than 5'8", both of us. Uh, we didn't sacrifice any quality. We didn't sacrifice any workmanship. We kept our eye on the ball and we made sure this van was a beauty, and it is. I'm very proud of the way this van turned out. The workmanship is good. Uh, the, in, the, the innovations are here. Uh, some new systems that I really like, and I will continue to improve on them in future vans. I'm bringing van one back so that I can improve on those systems a little bit, bring her up to speed, uh, so that all the Humble Road vans are at the same level of quality workmanship and, and systems. I got two more vans coming in next month. One of them's here, you know. So we're going to have a ProMaster and we're going to have a Sprinter side by side. And I'm going to be able to jump from one to the other, build them concurrently, and we'll be able to compare and contrast building a ProMaster with a Sprinter. On those two vans, I told the, the owners that the video is important. I've got to shoot video. I've got to put the same amount of effort into the video as I do into the build. They understand that. That's going to make a better product all around. There's only a few little things to do on this van. Just a few little trinkets, you know, like I got to put a gauge panel here. The, the panel's cut. I just have to put the gauges in. Boom, put that in. Everything's wired. The only thing left to do besides test the van is just complete the install of the Xantrex Freedom E-Gen system. That's the electric generator with the big Mama Luke battery. Uh, in putting that installation in place, just to beat that dead horse one more time, my build philosophy allowed me to have a very easy time of this major Xantrex install after the van is built. I had to run wires from the back of the van through the firewall to the Balmar regulator up front under the hood. No problem. I took out the drawers and I fished those wires behind the refrigerator panel, behind the shower, behind the armoire, right into the driver's seat. It was a piece of cake because I left myself chaseways to do just that. There's access everywhere. That was the point of my build. Uh, and as you can see, you know, you pull the drawers out You've got all access to everything you need so that when things do break in the future, I didn't say if they break, they will break. We don't live in an ideal world. Things are going to break. Things are going to need to be tweaked. I'm trying to minimize the labor at that point. You should be able to get at these things easily. Hopefully it's a fix you can do on the road and be on your way. A lot of the systems I put in place, if there's a fail in the system, there's a bypass so that you can stay on the road. Once I get this system tied up and I do my water test, the van's going to go for a week. I'm going to live in the van for a week. Uh, I'm going to run the systems. I'm going to check the solar, let that battery charge, drive the van, make sure that alternator's working, make sure the belts don't hit the hoses. The whole system, the whole van has got to be utilized in a rigorous manner for at least a week. Then I can hand it over to the vagabonds. They're going to hit the road. I don't know if you've ever seen his videos, but Dave, Dave drives over some areas of terrain that no van should ever go, but he knows what he's doing. But knowing that, we had to make sure that this van could take that road. I 
couldn't get this thing out. I couldn't get it out. What do you do in a situation like that? You call Gus. It is out. Gus took care of it. Gus got it out. The mess came, the mess went. We're in good shape. Gus took all the propane out of this van. Gus is a good helper. He comes in on weekends. So we have no more propane in this van. The tank is gone. The generator is gone. I'm removing this propane stove, replace it with an induction cooktop. So here's my plan. I've always got something cooking. I'm going to leave this. I'm just going to improve upon it, finish off the inside a little more presentably. Uh, but I'm going to maintain this, this log cabin feel. You know, this was Humble Road. This is where it all began. I like the flavor of this van. It's going to stay this way. So this big refrigerator is gone. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to replace it with a shorter refrigerator. I have found in my travels that I only use a little bit of freezer space for frozen vegetables, frozen fruits, for my smoothies. All the other cooking I do, I do fresh. So the refrigerator is more important to me. Shorter fridge with a smaller freezer. That's going to leave me room underneath now for my lithium batteries. So I don't know what the capacity is going to be just yet because I've got to scope out these dimensions down here. I do know they're going to be lithionics, lithium batteries. Then over here, I'm going to be removing the floor to this closet. Right here, I've got a propane fired furnace. That's coming out. I'm going to replace that with a Webasto diesel fired furnace to heat the cabin. Excellent unit. The S bar is just as good. Either one. I find the, the Webasto is a little easier to install. It's a little simpler to operate for the end user. So I'm going with that. Same thing over here. I got a propane fired water heater. This I'm going to replace with a Webasto water heater that comes from the boating world. Uh, isotherm, I think it's called isotemp. I don't know. Isotemp, isotherm, isotherm, isotemp. They're both made by Webasto. Four or five gallon tank capacity. Fits right in here. Runs off 750 watts of 120 volt power. But it also has a heat exchanger in it. So again, I'm going to put in my own reservoir with fresh water and I'm going to send that water out to the front of the van and I'll have another heat exchanger out there. And that's where I'm going to pull heat from the chassis glycol. I'm not sending the chassis glycol back here with the hosing. It stays up there. I just cut the hose, put in a, a heat exchanger and I haven't done anything to damage that chassis situation. I'm not taxing the cooling system at all. I bring that heat back here with my own water system. So when I'm driving, I'll be making hot water. I'll have the batteries. Of course, I'm going to put in a, an inverter, most likely a Xantrex, uh, maybe one of their new ones. They're Bluetooth now. They've made some great improvements to that. Um, what else? The batteries, the heat, the water heater. Of course, I'll put solar on the roof. I don't have a lot of room up there because I've got the air conditioner and uh, the fan. Now, the air conditioner, I pulled the old one out. I bought a, uh, a Dometic uh, Brisk. I don't know which one it is. It's a small unit. I'm going to replace that brand new. And this too, fantastic fan. I'm going to be replacing that with a Max Air fan. And then whatever solar I can fit up there is what I'm going to fit. Speaking of removing things, back in March, in the middle of March, I donated my prostate to science. <clears throat> And I knew about it for a while. It was a shock to me, but uh, it turned out it was a very, very easy ordeal. 
It was a textbook surgery. There were no complications, no problems. I'm fine. I'm absolutely fine. I was actually quite surprised at how tolerable the whole thing was. Uh, I barely, barely took Tylenol. It really was a piece of cake. And I had a catheter in for eight days. I was freaking out about that leading up to the surgery. You know, a little information is a dangerous thing when you're on the internet. Tolerable. I was surprised at how tolerable it was. Now, I did make a few modifications to that catheter to make it more comfortable for me. And I think I might shoot a video on that in the future. Anyway, I'm back. I'm fine. Uh, I think all that's behind me. I have to do Kegels exercise. So that's what I do. Okay, we're back to it. Coming down here today, see what you don't know is that yesterday I shot that segment that was in the Vagabond van. This is the next day and I'm in this van, but you don't know that. You think that I walked right from that van to this van. That we call continuity and the magic of camera work. Anyway, this is the following day. I'm in this van. On the way down, I'm just giddy with excitement because I'm shooting again. I am so thrilled to be shooting again. Yeah, I'm a little rusty. I got to get back into the flow of things, but just to be back doing it, I am going to kill it the rest of the year. The Xantrex Freedom E-Gen system. You saw the big Mama Luke battery, you saw the inverter and all the wiring that's in that van. This is the heart of the system right here. Can't run it without this. This is pretty much the rest of the kit. You do have to purchase breakers, bus bars, disconnect switches, and you add your own solar controller. In this case, I'm going with a Victron solar controller. This BMS, in my opinion, is the best brain on the market right now. I love this BMS. It comes from a company called Lithionics, and it's, uh, it's built uh, exclusively for Xantrex in this configuration, UL listed. Uh, what I did on this cardboard, I, uh, I took the measurements of the mounting board that's under the battery bridge in front of the wheel well on the driver's side. This is that mounting board where all this stuff has to go. So I traced it out here so I know where I can position these components and do my wire runs. Uh, I can go through several different compositions as I see fit just using white paper to indicate the path of the wires. I don't want any wires to cross. I want to keep all my positives on the top. I want to keep all my negatives on the bottom. I want it to be very clear and obvious when you look at it in the future if you have to make a repair or a change. Uh, if I carry across this bus bar in a certain manner, shore power, inverter, alternator, I do the same order on the negative side. So you know that post one is the positive and negative from that particular device. Consistency. So that's where I'm at right now. This is the final stage of this van build and uh, I'm just taking my time. Another thing that I concern myself with out here is this is 4 ot cable that I'm using to put this system together. Heavy, heavy stuff. This particular version of it is a, uh, a tin-stranded marine cable. It's much more flexible than typical 4 ot cable would be, but be that as it may, I put a lug, that's a, that's a poly walnuts term, be that as it may. I put a lug on the end of this thing so that I can keep an eye on my wire bends. Okay, I never want to stress this wire. I want gentle bends. That way we have a nice long life. See? So that's why I've got this out on the table and I'm doing it this way. When this is in and we fire it up, and we do all of our electrical and water testing, then I'll be able to do a final van tour video. A couple weeks away, that's it. We are getting so close, a couple weeks, and I'll be shooting the video tour. Now, I want to take my time with it. I rushed the first one in van one. I shot that in one day. 
I want to take my time. I want to do a proper job here because we didn't see these components being built and installed. I want to explain them. I want you to know why I did what I did and how I did what I did. So that's what we have to look forward to. Plus a very, very, very good second half of 2020.